are you to tell a man how to speak to his wife in his house? Even though as you get older, you naturally gain weight. And especially when you get pregnant, you gain at least nine pounds of weight. Mm -hmm. That would be insane to demand well, someone stay it? their certain weight. Welcome to Berean Peps. I'm your host, Vale Chikuni. We begin Pearl Davis. Today we'll be discussing Pearl Davis. I think she's becoming more and more unhinged, if I can call it that way. She is conservative, but she is not, she does not follow a biblical worldview, even though she professes to be a Catholic. Even the views that she holds, even fellow Catholics don't believe in the things that she holds. So I don't know what her what she believes i don't know what her beliefs are because the things that she believes they do not hold to a catholic view of marriage and she actually ended up having a debate with actually catholic so Pearl, uh, Pearl she's quite known as a female andrew ted version because this is exactly what she promotes so what has transpired this um this time around I think emotional abuse is a myth. I know you you said I agree with you, you seem that. to have a different perspective. Would you think emotional abuse is a valid reason to have a divorce if you support no, no fault divorce? No. Yeah. No, but but it something can be unacceptable behavior though still within a marriage. Absolutely. But who are you to tell a man how to speak to his wife in his house? Isn't that out of order? I mean, you do that all the time. You call other men simps all the time. I, but I don't tell them how to talk to their wife. That's your business. I, that, so, that is so, absolutely so, not true. So, okay, there, are, there, are, there are tons. Name it. Name it. Go yeah, on. for sure. There are what? tons of times where Which there ones? will be actual men in your comments saying so when I, I disagree. When I, when and I, you call them simps. When I say simps, it typically means out of order. So the, typically when I say that, I'm referring to a pattern of behavior where they're putting women on a pedestal. That's typically what I'm describing. But you, but so, you'll but say so, that about, so, about so, this is, but, 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 wait, we're going, but we're going to the what? But we're going to the what about? You're changing the topic. No, who are you? No, 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 no. It's a different because it's the same topic. my my original question is who are you to tell a man how to talk to his wife in his home? Well, I don't. Do you I, think? Oh, do you think that? Do you think you should be able to tell a man how to talk to his wife in his house? I think that men should conduct themselves with biblical standards when it comes. But, to... No, no. But answer my question. Do you think it's your place to tell men how to talk to their wives in their home? Answer think, yes or no. I think it is. It is perfectly reasonable to say that. That a man should hold himself to a Christian standard so, so, in the home. But, okay, so you do think it's your place. And this is what I mean when I say a lot of conservative women aren't really conservative. That's true. Well, what it ends up being why, is why, because woman be, sad, man mean. Wait, wait, I, woman I, sad, man bad. Because you're, you're first, you're first from a biblical point of view, you are supposed to be obedient to your husband mm -hmm. in all things. Okay. So before conservative women will talk about the disobedience, their first thing is their tone. Yes, the tone. All right, so... I mean, I don't know. Okay, so she wants, she wants to tell men what they can do and not do because these are quote unquote weak men, right? So why is it okay for you, uh, Pearl Davis, to be telling quote unquote weak men what to do and not to do? And then when somebody else is telling the other man, you're doing the same exact thing, but that's not even an issue at all, okay? She is, whatever she's bringing, it does not hold any order. Yes, Christians. We have a say in how people should be living according to the Bible. We are just quoting the scriptures. We are just quoting the scriptures, okay? The Bible makes the distinction already. So she's out here uh, making things that should sound like there's a, confu there's a confusion. No, there isn't a confusion, okay? So we're going to take her to the scriptures before I continue to show to her that no, sweethearts, okay? The scripture talks about these things. All right, so here we go. Okay, we have here. First Peter, uh, first Peter 3, okay? First Peter 1, 3, verse 1. Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husband, okay? Wives are to be subject to their own husbands. True. So that even if some do not obey the word, they may be worn without a word by their conduct of their wives. When they see your respectful and pure conduct. Okay? Do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear. But let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet speech, which is in God's sight very precious. For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husbands. As Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, and you are her children if you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. And then... Okay, she has issues with men and announced to her uh, the scriptures talks about men as well as women. Okay, and this goes to men. 
Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. So, according to the scriptures, men are supposed to honor their wives. Pearl Davis does not know that, and she'll actually have a problem with that. Why? Because to her, she's seeing that as men putting, uh, putting their wives on a pedestal. It is not. It is not. Okay? So, what is the other thing? I cannot tell another man how he should run his household. Nor can another man tell me what to do, right? Because I am called to submit to my husband. I'm not called to submit to every man out there. However, there is a distinction. This is talking about in terms of marriage. When I'm at church, right, I go to church, I am under the authority of the elders. My husband's authority doesn't stop because we've gone to church. His authority, as long as I'm married to him, he, he, he's above me. I am to submit to him. You see what I'm saying? But if my husband is telling me things that are in contradiction to scripture, I am under no obligation to submit to that. Okay? We submit to things that are godly. So we submit to things that are God-honoring. Anything that is against scripture, nobody, you, you are not to obey those things. Okay? Because they are out there outside, they are, they are operating outside their authority. So, if a man is abusing his wife, he is already operating outside his authority. So, yes, anybody and their mama can say something about it. Absolutely. Okay? Why? Because that is my brother in Christ. I am my brother's keeper. I'm my sister's keeper. Iron sharpens iron. Right? My neighbor, I'm to love my neighbor as much as I love myself. So, how is it loving for me to see that my neighbor... Uh, is getting beaten every day. My neighbor is being abused every day. And I'm not saying anything. I'm not doing anything about it. God is going to judge me for that, for saying silent. Okay? So everything according to its place, everything according to its order. The scripture is clear. We are to avoid we sh uh, women. We shouldn't be busy buddies. We shouldn't be gossipy. Right? But if something is out of order, if something is out of place, you cannot say like, oh, I didn't do anything about it because that wasn't my husband or that wasn't my wife. Like, no. Okay? If things are going astray, if things are whatever, there's a place for you to do something about it, to say something about it without you undermining your relationship with anybody else. Right? Because our relationship first is to God. So you're going to do things that's going to honor God. And guess what? Anything that's going to honor God is also going to honor your image bearer, right? It's vertical and then horizontal. If something is good, vertical is going to be good horizontal. If something is broken vertically, it's also going to be a broken horizontally. Uh, Pearl Davis doesn't know this. So it's very unfortunate. Roland, she was correct. No, just because somebody, you know, people are just saying, okay, they are being abused and everything, right? The idea is just not like, okay, people should divorce, right? There's forgiveness. People can get help. People can seek counseling. There are so many things people can do to, uh, to overcome those things, to prevent those things. Now, when people are going, ex they, if they are beyond control, yes, there's, that's why there's church discipline. So churches that don't practice church discipline, they have issues. They have issues because there's no recourse to such things. So plus, if you are a follower of Christ, if you're a believer, what are you doing abusing your wife? What are you doing abusing the image bearer? You, you know? So those are not the things that uh, Christians are supposed to be doing to begin with. Okay? The Bible caused that sin. So those are the things that we're not supposed to be doing uh, uh, to begin with. So uh, Pearl Davis ended up having a debate as well with Trent Horn, who is a, a Catholic apologist. And they were also discussing about this marriage. And then she was saying the same things that she's been corrected on, just regurgitating the very same thing. So just take a, uh, let's take a look and see what she said. Times of something that's rational or irrational. Yeah, irrational. Yeah, if a, if a husband says... Like obviously that, no crimes, right? Yeah, or if a husband says, you know, I want you to um, lose a, a massive amount of weight, for example, that would put someone's, if your husband wants you to do something to change your body that would put your health at risk, I would say that's irrational. Okay, but a normal amount of weight would be fine. I would right? say I, I would say I think it's fine for husbands and wives to want each other to be healthy, but it's very quickly that if a husband or a wife asks for a person to be of a certain weight, that can easily be more of a, out of a desire for vanity than for the other person's well-being. What about health? 
What about health? I think yeah. it's I think it's good for husbands and wives to want each other to be healthy. No, but I'm asking the husband. Why do you always bring it back to the husband? Because I'm asking about the wife. I didn't ask you about the husband. Because I'm, so saying, I'm this- saying for the husband, is he can he ask that his wife stays a certain weight? Is that rational? It's rational for him to ask her to be healthy, but staying at a certain yeah. weight your entire life. That's not necessarily going to be healthy. Like saying, "Oh, I want you to always be 120 pounds." Like, "Hey, I got pregnant. Oh, I'm kind of getting past that now. I don't like that." That's that would be irrational. That would so that would he would not be allowed to do that under your I, your thought. I think it would be insane if a man said that his wife needs to stay Why? a certain. <laughs> Why? <laughs> to, to Why? Say, like, what's wrong with men having standards? What's wrong with that? <laughs> Pearl, you do realize that it's absolutely like literally there was a joke in the office mm-hmm. where BJ Novak says some supermodels lose weight when they're pregnant. Mm-hmm. That shows that he's just an insane chauvinistic person to demand that a wife stay Why? at a certain weight, even though as you get older you naturally gain weight, and especially when you get pregnant, you gain at least nine pounds of weight. Mm-hmm. That would be insane to demand that someone stay at a certain weight. Women lose it all the time. I fail to see how any of this is relevant <laughs> no, to marriage, no, by the way. Well, I, I'm, what I'm trying to understand is your mindset. Mm-hmm. So so why, why can't men have standards in marriage? Because if you're saying that men can't have standards in their own marriage, like this this I is, never this said is that. the, I never well, said you're, that. you're saying it's irrational for a guy to demand his wife stay a certain weight. Why? Be, why is that wrong? To stay wrong? a certain weight his, why? The, during their entire marriage. Why? Why is that wrong? Because bio- I, I've seen women do it. Would you like me to answer the question? Go ahead. Okay. Because biologically, we our bodies change over time. They'll naturally. So you can see how shallow this woman is. So according to her, husbands should be demanding their wives. You get married to her, she should stay a certain weight. If she ends up uh, putting on weight, the husband can divorce the, the, the wife. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. That's vanity and vanity and vanity. Nobody is going to say the same way they uh, uh, what used to be. Okay. We all going to get old. Okay. You are going to have wrinkles. Okay. <laughs> you are going to have wrinkles. You all, you're going to end up putting on weight. There's so many things that are going to happen in life for one reason or the other. It's not wrong for a wife to stay healthy, the husband to stay healthy. We are to be good stewards of our bodies. Okay. Nobody is arguing for that. But what she is arguing for, it's, it's unbiblical. Okay, it's unbiblical. And there is no way a husband is going to go over there. Okay, I want to divorce my wife. Why? Because my, my wife has gained weight. Like, what, what is that? What is that? That's not even a reason for people to divorce. It's unfortunate. This is her thinking. And this is the things that she promotes on her platform. Okay, she promotes on her platform. Time is going. Okay, we all going to get old one day. You're not going to look the same as you used to, as you used to look when you were a teenager. It just doesn't work that way. Okay, the biology clock is always ticking. Okay, age, uh, with age, those things are going to come. That's normal course of life. Now, there's other people, uh, there's there's different reasons why people have put on weight, okay? Somebody can put on weight because they have babies. So now you're going to leave your wife because she's given you babies and now she's put on weight. Is that a reason for, for you to leave her? Uh, some, they can put on weight because they're sick. There's so many other reasons. But be that as it may, that is not a reason for a man to put a standard on his wife because that is vanity. That is vanity, okay? You should uh, pursue healthy goals together with your husband and your wife. There's a good place for that. And don't forget, even this uh, fitness lifestyle, it can become an idol. Okay, it can become an idol. Have you gone to the gym? You see the, the stuff that women are wearing at the gym? It's just like, what are you doing? Okay, you're at the gym. Okay, trying to cause men to stumble all over the place. It's not appropriate. So that's what uh, Peril Davis believes. Okay, it's unfortunate, but yeah, this is what she believes. So that is not all. There was more. So let's listen a little bit. So I, I, even, I even if think... a man abandons, he, he just leaves, his wife has been a stay-at-home mom for 10 years, three kids, she has been out of the workplace, going to have a difficult time finding a job, and, and I know personally, mm-hmm. women that this has happened to, and he leaves and goes to have sex with someone else. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about other women being bad. You're saying in that case, the man shouldn't be compelled I, to provide for the well, family he abandoned. Well, I would say for the same case that if women cheat and leave for another husband, they shouldn't have alimony or child support either. I'm saying in both cases, we no, should I, not it, We should not have alimony or child support. Let me ask you another question. Support. Let's say you have a, I don't let me ask you this. I don't believe in paying people to make wrong decisions. Okay. I don't believe in that. All right. So if a woman, mm-hmm. let's say you have a stay-at-home dad, mm-hmm. successful woman has been out. She's boss Can girl. Can she be a lawyer? Sure. She's right. she's she's the boss girl lawyer, turns into the incre- She-Hulk when she needs to, whatever. Yeah. Okay. All right. And she's making a lot of money. And then she leaves her husband and kid mm-hmm. says, hey, Frank, you can have the kids. I'm going to run off with this other lawyer at the office. And now he and the kids mm-hmm. are in poverty. Do you think that she should have to pay child support to nope. them? No. I think okay. he should get a job. Okay. And so should she. So you don't believe, do you, yeah, do you believe in marriage at all? 
I believe, <laughs> what kind of marriage? That, that's the, I, I don't believe in marriage as it is today. What? If we if we tomorrow, if we tomorrow got rid of child support, got rid of alimony, got rid of all these incentives for bad decisions, fine. Pearl, then, then I would have no problem. But my issue is, one, the quality of women is lower than ever before. Pearl, the, risk is, is, the risk is higher and women are paid to Pearl, leave. Pearl, what is, what is marriage? One person for a lifetime, and the woman mm-hmm. submits to her husband and is an obedient for a lifetime. Okay. But I am not. Um, well, and see, I guess my head goes in a couple directions because the other thing is, uh, today it's nothing. Okay. Today, so, the you know you, you said the average marriage is longer than seven years. Let's say it's twelve years. The median the average, length is twenty-one years. The average. Le- let, let's let's say twenty-one. That's still not a lifetime. Mm-hmm. And, and a quarter of a quarter of divorces are gray divorces. So it happens when when people are in their fifties and sixties. So mm-hmm. so that's the other thing about these stats. It doesn't predict who in the future gets divorced. It it's says true. today. So the and it doesn't include people that are separated. I, I know couples in their fifties and sixties. They've been separated for years. They're still okay. counted as married. So um, right, my to... my my issue again is marriage as it is today. And I just think you would never sign a contract mm-hmm. that pays somebody to leave. I, I think it's super logical. If someone's paid to do the wrong thing, they're gonna do it and what are women doing? Okay. They're if... leaving. So once again she doesn't know what marriage she you know fine actually i can give her a pass on that definition but she does not believe that it's uh marriage is an objective thing right god is the one who's designed marriage we don't get to decide to choose what it is and what it is not okay marriage is between a man and a woman for life marriage is not a contract marriage is a covenant Pearl does not know that. And then she says like, oh, I don't believe in marriage as it is today. Well, we don't get to define what what marriage is, okay? We don't get to define it. God is the one who established that marriage all the way in Genesis 2 before the fall. So whatever people call marriage, if it does not comport to a husband and a wife, whatever they want to call it, that's, that's whatever they want to call it, okay? God is the one who defines what marriage is. So it's unfortunate that her definition uh, even though she believes it's for life, like, oh, but there's all these other things, people shouldn't be doing it, the quality of women have gone low, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Even if that is true, okay, once again, it does not take away what marriage is, okay? And the examples that she gives, they all, it's materialistic. It's all about vanity. And it's all like, you know, I guess it just applies to America, okay? When you go to poor countries in Africa, people still get married for life. And both husband and wife, they don't even have anything. Okay, but they come together, they get married, they raise their kids with whatever little they have. Okay, that's still marriage because God honors that, right? Not only that, even if the things that she's saying are true, which I don't believe, by the way, right? You do not judge, uh, you do not judge marriage by its abuse. So people who are abusing marriage, people who are taking advantage of marriage, they're abusing what marriage is supposed to be. A, a woman is supposed to be a helper to the man. A wo- a man is supposed to honor his wife. A woman is supposed to submit to his wife. Okay? All of you are accountable to God. If anything, a man is supposed to sacrifice his life as Christ sacrificed his life for us, which is even a more higher calling. Okay? A man is supposed to provide, supposed to do all those things. Do you know what Pearl believes that women are supposed to do? They're, all they're supposed to do is just to look attractive to their husband. That is so shallow. Okay, like the scripture actually say, like your beauty should not just be adorning the outside. It should be the hidden spirit inside the heart it should be inside. Okay, it's it's the wisdom. Um, it's a quiet spirit. Wisdom. A woman who, who you know, who know who, Proverbs thirty one. Okay, I think that's what we we need to say now. Some scriptures. Okay, Proverbs thirty one. So the examples of godly women in the scripture. We are to be like um, we are to be like daughters of Sarah. Right? She honored her husband, and she, you know, she was a good woman. So, but Pearl does not believe in all those things. So when you say these things, it'd be like, oh, you guys are, are simping for men. You are feminists. Now that's what she's accusing, right? She, uh, you are feminists. And that's not true. So the picture that she's looking for, it's not a, a picture of what marriage is or what marriage, good marriage is supposed to be. She went on to be like, yes, you know, women should be, uh, men are busy watching corn because women are not, uh, are not sleeping with them. No, women are not supposed to be sleeping with me Mar- uh, sex is reserved for marriage only but Pearl d- does have no problem if these young women are having sex outside marriage why so they can cater to men so that these men shouldn't be watching corn no men shouldn't be watching corn to honor God to begin with because it's not even good for themselves so just because like okay if you're not uh, if you're not getting sex get married 
you can have that you know to for life it's available for you for life so that's what it is so these men they want the benefits of a marriage but they don't want to put a ring on it and now she's out here blaming every woman out there okay and yes we know there are women out there who are selling themselves on only fans uh, all these are things those are those are sinful behaviors and those things are not appropriate also Okay, so we judge marriage according to the scriptures, not according to the perversion that's happening in our culture, not according to artificial standards. Okay, husbands have responsibilities to their wives and wives have responsibility to their husband according to the scripture. Okay, so whatever the world has to say, it does not change what marriage is. I hope uh, Pearl Davis can learn a thing or two. But all right, guys, I encourage you to watch the debate. It was very, very interesting. Okay. She says that she's Catholic. She believes all those things. But she was talking to a federal Catholic over there who disagrees with every position that she brought forth. She brought forth. So I didn't like it. It was actually a very nice debate. So she made her match people who know what they're talking about. Because when she's out there, she's just pontificating like, oh, it's this. I'm, I'm talking about marriage according to the legal standards and everything. Like, no, whatever is happening on the legal front, it does not change what marriage is. Are there women who take advantage of men? Uh, yes. Are there men who take advantage of women? Yes. But it still does not negate what marriage is, right? God is the author of marriage. He's the one who determines what it is and what it is not. And since the scripture the canon is closed we don't get to define it right my marriage is objectively between a man and a woman and that's it but i'm interested to know what you guys think about this whole debate leave me your comments and be sure to subscribe to my channel follow me on instagram facebook and x until next time remember to be in the north